Okay, it is 630 and we'll call this board meeting Thurston Conservation District Board of Supervisors to order here April 23rd. Uh, for the record, we have four of five supervisors here tonight. Betsy Dubreda is not here. She's excused. And we've got some staff with us, Sophia and uh, excuse me, and Sarah, and our legal counsel, Mr. Cushman from um, Deschutes Law. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, first up here is uh, our agenda review. Um, I will need a motion on the agenda. So moved. Uh, second. Okay, it's been moved by Doug, seconded by Helen to approve the agenda. We'll take a vote on that. Doug? Aye. Helen? Aye. David? Aye. And chair votes aye. We have approved the agenda. Next up is the consent agenda, um, rather lengthy consent agenda tonight. I'm not going to read everything on it, but we do have uh, six items on consent tonight. Oh, I'm. And uh, yes, it sounds I like there's a motion to be made. We need a motion on our consent agenda. Consent agenda. Okay, it's moved by Helen. Second. Seconded by David. Vote on the consent agenda. Helen. Aye. David. Aye. Doug. Aye. Chair votes aye. We have approved consent. Um, that brings us to public comments. And this is the time at which any member of the public can address the board for up to three minutes on something that's on their mind that might also be of interest and relevant to us. And it's wonderful because we rarely have people <laughs> on here physically for public comment. So Hello, welcome, and please introduce yourself and okay. tell us what's on your mind tonight. I'm going to set my timer. All right. So my name is Rhonda Larson Kramer, and I'm a, a landowner of some property that's just down the street and not so structure on that. On 93rd and Old Highway 99 and Sheldon Road, and uh, my family has had a, for, a forest land for over 50 years there. And my husband and I have a stewardship forest that we practice ecological forestry. Uh, com as compared to sustainable forestry, but like warehouses. Uh, but that's not why I'm here. Uh, I'm here because I wanted to alert the board to a new law, relatively new law that is creating a situation in Thurston County, um, but this could impact the entire state. Uh, and this new law is from 2022 called the UGA swap law. The, um, the way it works is uh, everyone knows there's the urban growth area that's around cities, and that's uh, designed to be the same size that you need to build enough uh, land and buildings for people for the next 20 years of population growth forecast, right? Uh, and the urban growth, the growth management act says you're not allowed to expand the urban growth boundary, the UGA, the belt, unless the population expands and you run out of land. In 2022, there was an exception created, and this is the UGA swap law. And it says that local jurisdictions have a little more flexibility to put some, to expand the, the belt around more land in a certain area of the belt where it is, uh, the existing land has uh, been all used up. So it's essentially, um, they've exceeded the capacity in that area. The uh, law is new, so the county doesn't know really what, how to interpret it, and they're currently interpreting it incorrectly, um, and they are believing that you can just do a swap anywhere. <laughs> um, the law was written by developers, and uh, so it's not the most clear as far as creating that uh, clarity for the county. And we have a test case, the first in the state, and the problem with the law is that it endangers rural lands, and that's why I'm here, uh, because this affects farmlands, forest lands, any land that's anywhere near an urban growth area it, boundary is in danger under this law. And the reason is that there is no uh, requirement under the law that after the swap, which I'll explain in a second, 
that there be no net loss of natural resource lands, no net loss of, um, of conserved lands. So this law says that you can put some air, land inside the urban growth area. You can expand the urban growth area in a certain area. If in another area, you uh, take some property out of the urban growth area. And when, it, when this swap is done, there may not be any more than uh, the same acreage that was in before. Uh, the, so it seems benign, seems okay. The problem is in this case, they're taking land out that isn't buildable anyway, it's conserved anyway. So there's uh, a net loss in natural resources as a result. Um, and I've used my time up, but I wanted to give you more information if you want uh, by just sending around this flyer. The QR code has more information for you um, if you want. And then you can ask me questions as well. Yeah, Chair, may we ask? Yes, questions? absolutely. Go ahead, Helen. Okay. Um, can you tell us, and I believe this is the case, there have been requests, but there are specific requests right now to do swaps. Can you tell us anything about what your state even this year and put some money? Yes, the one that is the test case, which is uh, explained in this at this QR code that I'm sending around, is, is down the road on 93rd and 99 uh, and Sheldon Road. And it's 33 acres of forest land that is uh, the developers are intending to have it put into the urban growth area and intending to. Uh, build essentially a mini city there uh, of over 200 units of housing, uh, safely sized grocery store, um, uh, YMCA, uh, office buildings, and storage facilities. <clears throat> this property <clears throat> has a remnant of the Pallets Trail on it, which is a Native American trade route, but you know it has trees on it as well. So this is it, a comp it's a climate change issue, climate mitigation issue. Um, there's also the issue of uh, affordable housing, which is what is uh, explained more at that length. If you have a car, it costs $10,000 per year to have a car. If you put affordable housing out in the boonies, that means that the people who are living there have to use their car to drive to work. And so it is an affordable housing issue. So from a good growth management perspective, we should not be putting 200 units of multifamily housing far out like this. And I just for clarification, you know, part of what I was asked was curious about is so you take it's it's sort of like squeezing a balloon. You know, you squeeze here and it pops out there. Yeah, that's a good analogy. So um so that's the part that pops out is grabbing this piece of land. Is the piece of land that is being squeezed out of the UGA or that's proposed to be squeezing out, is that currently undevelopable anyway or correct okay so it's kind of a net loss it is a net loss yeah it's yes. they're they're saying that it's a net zero but it's not mm -hmm. uh it's a net zero when it, all you're looking at is acreage yeah it's a net loss when it comes to rural land protections a uh, couple of questions so this one you're talking about is this an expansion of the from water urban growth yeah. area okay so have you talked with members of Tom Water Council and or the county commission around these things? I have talked, we actually have talked to all of the county commissioners um, and that was to have them make a decision to re, re, either remove it from the docket or put it low on the docket. Yeah. And our um, in, entreaties failed. Um, the Tom Water City Council, I have talked to um, a couple, and I am intending to really talk to all. Uh, I did talk to uh, the planning, long range planning uh, staff at Tom Water as well. Have you talked with Leetta Delhoff? Yes. Okay. The reason She's I bring... the one I talked to the most. Okay. The reason I bring that up is I'm participating in a recently formed group of elected officials from all the various jurisdictions that are kind of talking about sustainability and conservation, trying to come up with shared strategies. So that's good to know because I will certainly bring this up at our next meeting okay. where we have county commissioners <laughs> and city council people and all these yeah. things too. Um, and let them know that we've also heard from you know, people on this. Yeah, and my message to her was the Growth Management Act requires us to build up, not out. Yeah. 
and this does the opposite. Yes, and knowing that the a vast majority of farmland in this county is adjacent to urban growth areas is particularly concerning. Right. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. Other um, other questions for Rhonda? I work for a fish agency. We always get mitigation banking stuff. The same issue, you know, your tip isn't the same as this tat over here. Yeah. Oh, it's not equivalent. That's just, you know, maybe one of your acres is equivalent to 10 of ours. Uh -huh. So, so wetland banking. And just, yeah. It's too many games played with it. Yeah. Yeah. To game the system. Thank you for bringing it to our attention and for being here. Can um, I listen to the rest of the meeting? Is that okay? This is a public okay. meeting. We welcome, we welcome you to be here. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I don't believe we have anyone else that wishes to make public comment tonight. So we will conclude public comment there. We'll move on to partner reports. Um, first up here is NRCS. We do not have Lynn here tonight. And then we also do not have Gene Fike here. So we will skip past the State Conservation Commission. Uh, Doug submitted written updates for WACD and NACD. Is there anything that you want to add to your written updates? Yes, there is. One of the things that has come up is the commission, the WACD has got a draft work plan out for next year. We're asking for comments by May 10th, and it's on the website. And I think we need to decide whether we want to send something individually or as a group, as a TCD. I think either way will be effective. Um, you said the deadline is May 10th? Yes. So we would need to take that action as a group tonight. And do you have anything specific like you're proposing or? No. Okay, no, so it I'd sounds be... like individual action is going to be yeah. the way that we, we go here. And if we, I'd suggest we CC Sarah so she knows what we're saying. Okay, so well, May 10th? I, I did bring up one issue that was legacy. We need to be uh, training people to replace us, and that's a big deal. And we see some of the CDs. We don't, we don't have people that are stepping up to a mark. Like, you mean at the at the districts or at the WACD or both? Both. Okay. Yeah. We'll send out uh, an email with that information and link to provide comments. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. And that's it. Most for WACD and WACD. Okay, great, thanks. Um, that then takes us to an unusual item on our agenda here. <laughs> item number six, appreciation of board service because we have a board member leaving us who has decided to do other things with her Tuesday evenings and <laughs> another time for this. Um, and I think this is just a chance for us to express our appreciation collectively and individually for um, your service here for three years or I'm something sure. like that. Yeah, I don't remember when did COVID either. start? I mean, that's- That's a time warp, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It started in 2020, yeah. um, but I, I, I think 21? maybe 21 is when, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you came on. Um, but as Sarah was pointing out earlier, um, this is a very different organization than well, she was talking about 2019. We're also very different than we were in 2021, uh, just in terms of the stability of the organization and the funding and the community res respect. And, um, and no one person is responsible for any of that, but collectively, everybody is responsible for it. And you certainly brought some pretty um, important ideas and uh, information to this board. You represented us uh, for a while, some outside organizations, and um, that's a link that you know I'll be missing for sure. I won't know what's happening necessarily at some of those things anymore because you won't be here to tell us. So I appreciate you stepping in, taking on the challenge of um, being an elected official and um, community leadership and um, helping guide this organization for the last three years. And um, we'll miss you. Well, thank you. And yes. I will, I will uh, invite other board members to chime in, if you will, and staff. Well, I'm glad I met you and gotten to know you. And I was thinking, for the first time we met, we were at a meeting at Dirty Days 
pizza. <laughs> I remember that. Was at that meeting? <laughs> well, we were trying to save TCD. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun, but and now we're having pizza again, and you're leaving. Yeah. So. <laughs> Full I'm, circle. I'm never eating pizza again with you. <laughs> I, would, I would wish you well. Thank you. I I'd known a little bit about you just in the you know the local area here and running for other positions. And when I heard you were coming to the conservation district, I was like, man, we're we're doing good. We've got Helen coming to work with us. This is this is awesome. It's been a pleasure working with you the last three years and just uh, getting all your input and it's been been very fun. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. I have to say, yeah, I was thinking about this, you know, like I've been on a, a lot of um you know, I've been a volunteer on, on a lot of things through the years. I think the first thing I volunteered for was in second grade. I was like on the on the school, you know, kiddies committee, whatever it was. <laughs> um, but and then I was uh, as a young teen, I was uh, the, the uh, youth representative on an urban league thing in Portland. <laughs> so I've, I've been doing this kind of thing for a long time. And I can't think of anything I've volunteered for in this kind of capacity where it's been so easy and I've been so unnecessary. <laughs> and I so much appreciate that in so many ways. It's it's been fantastic to just watch, you know, stand back and watch this this organization. You know, when I came on, it was out of, you know, I, I remember, you know, calling TJ and just saying, do you have anybody that's stepping up for this? And the answer was fundamentally not really. I thought the answer was you are, Helen. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, you know, I was, my main concern was to be, you know, like stick my finger in the dike and make sure that nothing untoward happened and to just be there with my finger in the dike and I think that was that was necessary for about five minutes <laughs> so mm -hmm. I you know it's been real just a pleasure to see the organization take off the way that it has and I'm so excited for the future of the TCD it's it's I just can't see anything but just great stuff you know really important work important to the community such a you know such a wonderful team i just can't think of another organization i've seen where everybody is so committed works together so well does so much good work so efficiently it's it's just great you know it makes you believe in government again for goodness sake <laughs> it's fantastic i would say you know uh on a reflective note i took a look at the 2022 ag census and it is, you know, even, even with all the success, you know, we've lost between the two censuses, five years, 10% of the farmland is gone. We're still losing over a thousand acres a year. That's still a crisis. I mean, at this rate, we'll run out in 38 years. Yeah. And there's, there's definitely a, a success in crisis as well, because so many, what is it, something like half, almost half of farmers are over 65 in Thurston County. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the challenges are huge. I think that uh, what you talked about today, the conference, um, is, is a very exciting way to bring on new people. Um, I hope we can find ways to support the fact that the cost of farming is going up while the, you know, the profits are going down you know those are those are big challenges um and and so you know i know there's a there's a lot of work to do uh and i think that this organization is going to do it and it's going to be fun to watch so thank you and i'll add a thank you on behalf of all of the staff uh at tcd as well um like David mentioned, you had a reputation coming into this organization that I think added a lot of strength and credibility to our district when we needed it the most. So you may feel like you were unnecessary coming into this, but I think you were just what we needed to continue to add a unique perspective and really elevate yeah. the work that we do together. Um, 
I've appreciated personally, just your sheer intelligence and connection to so many different layers, especially around growth and development. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a lot of professional development opportunities for me. You've highlighted some things for me to focus on, which I've been really grateful for. Um, and your unwavering commitment to conservation in our community is just top notch. So we do have something for you. Um, hopefully, uh, something you'll enjoy, not just a dust collector, but um, we wanted to present. Here's some well wishes from the board and staff. This is also a photo that was taken. Uh, Kiana Center in our office is a beautiful photographer. This is one of our riparian restoration mm -hmm. project sites out on the Scoopum Chuck River, and also just a beautiful and aesthetic photo. And um, we know you have been there with shovels and gloves, restoring uh, habitat on Orca Recovery Day um, with us. So this is a little reminder yeah. of the work that yes. you've actually done to change the landscape as well as our community. So thank you, Helen. I can hear thunderous applause. Yeah. 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 And, my, and my, my progeny continues with this because this is what he does for a living. Too. <laughs> so this is nice. really awesome. Next generation. Very important. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right. Well, meeting adjourned now. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> one things to do here. Um, actually, we have um, a contract award to do here. We have a construction vendor agreement that we uh, are scheduled to take action on here this evening. Do you want to introduce this at all before we take a motion? Sure. Um, this is the uh, construction, the award for the construction of uh, the large scale Riverbend Ranch project under the Aquatic Species Restoration Plan along the Skookum Chuck River. We've had a lot of conversation. We've been working on this project for many, many years during different design phases. You guys have approved multiple funding agreements in different phases, and we are finally to the construction of this massive project, which will be almost $5 million. So um, it's a hefty contract, the biggest construction project that the district has done, but I have to hand it to our staff. They've done an excellent job stewarding this, and um, we have walked lockstep with legal counsel through this process, which has been wonderful. So, yeah, is there any... Just for the record, Ben, are you recommending that the board approve this? I'm not taking a position on approval. There's no reason not to. Thank you. I, I appreciate the diplomatic uh, endorsement or non-endorsement. Uh, okay, so with that, we need a motion. <laughs> well, I move that we're, I'm just trying to think of the wording here uh, <laughs> that we approve what Brumfield the Brumfield, Brumfield. construction okay. yeah the Brumfield construction vendor agreement that we what do we do we approve it we, yep we approve yeah. the agreement well okay I move that we do so so Dang it's it. approved it's essentially it's a contract that yeah. we're approving so it's been moved we have a second a second seconded by David so a vote on this uh, vendor agreement for the largest construction project in our history mm -hmm. um, Helen aye David aye Doug aye and chair votes aye we have approved it I will play it out it made our board packet like a new personal best as far as how thick it was mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Boy, that was long. It was a long one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be gorgeous when it's finished. Okay, so that takes us to uh, the last uh, series of items here under governance. Um, first up, 2024 election update. Yeah, um, nothing since you got the email after the uh, election ended uh we have the apparent uh winning candidate marianne tompkins who's here with us tonight um there's been no contests of the election that have come forward from anybody that we're aware of our election process ran so smoothly um there's a very apparent winner in the voting um we thanked both candidates for their participation in the elections process uh, the commission is set to certify our election at their May 16th meeting. Um, pending that certification of the election, our new supervisor will start immediately. And that'll be your official end date mm -hmm. at that yeah. time and place. So we'll have a new board member, presumably joining us at our public hearing and then our May meeting. 
And may I say, she is absolutely the right person at the right time, and she's going to make a real contribution to right. the PC. Right. And both Sarah and I had a chance to talk with Marianne and start to bring her into the into the fold here a little bit. So um, I agree. I think we have a we're going to continue to have a really good functional working board. Come May. Um, okay. Next up then uh, is the annual plan, which we've looked at at least once or twice um, and is scheduled for final adoption tonight. So Sarah, any introductory remarks about that? Yeah, this is the final version of the annual plan that you're right, you have seen a couple of times now. Um, the board decided to table the adoption of the annual plan officially until this meeting, um, just to ensure that we had as robust of board participation as possible to approve this. There have been no changes. Um, this is the final version. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve of this draft version for the annual plan. Okay, it's been moved by Doug to approve uh, the annual plan. Uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by David. You will vote on that motion. Doug. Aye. David. Aye. Helen. Aye. Chair votes aye. We have approved the annual plan. The two pieces that will be added to that that you don't see yet are the chair's statement and the ED statement. That's the annual report. Oh, that's right. That's the annual report. I get these things confused all the time. <laughs> well, that's coming too. <laughs> that will be coming. That will be published uh, beginning of May, hopefully yes. for the May newsletter, and that annual report will be at the public hearing. Well. Yes. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Keeping thank reports you. and plans straight. <laughs> oh, okay. I just, I just um, okay, so last item uh, here uh, to take a look at is what's coming up next month. Um, of course, we have the uh, public hearing on rates and charges on the 22nd, and then we will have our work session and board meeting the following Tuesday, though, whatever that date is. But uh, here's what we have. Now, um, very similar to tonight's agenda, plant sale recap with Kiana. What your presentation, anything? Yeah, we're working on the uh, land trust perspective presentation here. We've been doing a robust amount of work with land trust to put together funding applications for capacity building to help with that farmland loss crisis. For a long time. So um, that's one that we're working on, trying to uh, make sure schedules align. Okay. Uh, so there's a draft uh, topic list, and then we have our draft agenda for the board meeting. Pretty standard items there. Um, welcoming our new board member next month. And we will also have to have annual elections at that point, too. We do that as soon as we have a new board seated each May. Um, and I think, I don't see it on here, but we will also be reviewing public comment from the rates and charges meeting. We have rates and charges in the, um, in work, the work session, session, but if you'd like to have a formal on the record review of that public comment, I we think can that would be, that. I think that would be good to put it on video. So strike it from the work session yep. and put it in the agenda. Yep. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Transparency. And then a placeholder for uh, uh, an executive session, should we need that? Is there any anticipation at this point that we will need that? It is possible. Okay. So it's possible and we leave it on there. And All right. What, what's the date of the next board meeting? I don't know. 20, <laughs> the 28th. 28th. I think that's the day before the WACD meeting over in Ellensburg. So, so they'll be here. Okay. Okay. Uh, with that, then we have got we've come to the end of tonight's agenda. So all we need now is a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Moved by David. Second. Seconded by Helen. Vote on adjourning. David. Aye. Helen. Aye. Doug. Aye. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. It is seven something. Seven. Seven on the dollar. Seven o'clock. So yes. Good job. Good job. Good job, everyone. We like these efficient meetings.